If it's in a word or it's in a look, you can't get rid of the Babadook. If you're a really clever one and you know what it is to see, then you can make friends with a special one, a friend of you and me. <laughs> his name is Mr. Babadook, and this is his book. A rumbling sound, then three sharp knocks. Ba 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 duk duk duk. That's when you'll know he's around. You'll see him if you look. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. is Cheap Seat Reviews. Hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. This is episode 186, and tonight we're talking about the Babadook. I am Sean Allred, and joining me tonight... Wait, Sam, did you do your For the Greater Good bit? No, actually I didn't. Uh, yeah, yeah. For the Greater Good. Okay. Thanks. Boy, it kind of threw me off there. I am Sean Ard, and joining me tonight is Andrew. The kid should still go to therapy, Jimison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said with a mouthful of food. <laughs> and Sam... Also keeps a creepy thing in his basement, and his name is Chad Vector. Yeah, I'm training. I'm training a little uh, six year old to uh, stab you in the leg with a uh, <laughs> knife, just so you know. Oh man, that's pretty rough. Uh, pull up a comfy yeah. chair and let's dive into the Baba Duke. All right. I, by the way, before we before we dive in too far, I, I got to give you props, dude. The the intro music for this month has been. Spot on, awesome! Thank oh. you for doing that for us. Oh, you're welcome. It was fun to do in a motor in a motorhome driving through somewhere in West Virginia. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, so no corny. Um, corny sent out a message, and uh, I'm just letting you guys know he's going to be off the show for a little while. He's got some work has gotten the better of him recently, and he needs to uh, straighten out that situation. So it'll be just the three of us. Maybe we can get. Uh, Chad back on or um, somebody else. So uh, we like to call it a hiatus. Yes, a hiatus or uh, a what's, hiatus. what's the term that you do when you a sabbatical? He's on sabbatical. Sabbatical. There you go. Yeah, not that this is higher learning or anything, but he is doing that. So we wish him the best and we miss him. Um, so it's just the three of us tonight, which is fine. We'll uh, we'll um, get through this together. We will troop through as we do soldier on, if you will, through this movie, The Babadook, the 2014. Indie film Australian, the Baba Duke. Yeah, I guess so. Right? I mean, I think it was Australian. There was although I, I certainly noticed this time around, I was like, oh, I guess Australians are, are starting to get better uh, American accents, or at least more understandable than the uh, old Crocodile Dundee days. Yeah, no, I, well, from the Barbie. well, I thought, and I thought they were British for a while because <laughs> they used. I don't know. It just felt it's because I guess because the outside looks so bleak and rainy all the time. <laughs> I thought they were in England. Um, <laughs> it's the happiest place on earth. Well, I mean, I just always, for some reason, just assumed that Australia is always 104 degrees and sunny. I know that's wrong. Why, Why do you think that Mary Poppins flew with an umbrella? Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, man. Because it's windy. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Um, sorry, my daughter is losing her mind. I just it's a little distracting. Um. Uh, we can't hear it. That's just so you know. We're good. So sorry, this is distracting. Um, yeah. my, my wife is taking care of it. Uh, my daughter's she's very very sick right now. Um, oh poor thing. Yeah, it sucks. It really does suck. Um, I hate when kids, yeah, it's no fun when kids are. No, especially when she because she's only eighteen. She's oh. eighteen months old, so she can't tell us what hurts, what's wrong. I mean, I know what's yeah. wrong, but like, there's nothing we can do about it, you know. So yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So this movie, speaking of uh, 
child not children really being good. sick. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. Um, yeah. this movie, ah, uh, gosh, where to start? So, um, Sam had fully admitted that he put all this this list together of movies. <laughs> um, yes, I did. And uh, yeah. so this movie was on the list, and I have heard of this movie several times, and I I'd heard a lot of actually pretty good things about this movie. Yeah, like it was um, the scariest thing around. Um, yeah, it was yeah. like it was really terrifying, and that it was a really good like indie kind of thing, and um, and so I was I was actually kind of excited because I as I mean I think everyone in that has listened to the show knows that we don't really do at least the two of us and Andrew I think you're with us, and I know Corny is we don't really do horror films well, like we're we like <laughs> we like bad horror like dumb horror. Tucker yeah. and Dale versus Evil is, is like that's as good as it gets for us, you know. Um, like that's that's the horror that we want to do. Shaun of the Dead kind of stuff, right? So when he, then you get to come along a movie that's genuinely scary like this. Um, well, then we have to deal with it in our own ways. So, um, <laughs> had any of us seen this before? No, not me. Andrew, you're muted. I had not seen it. Okay. Sorry, Sorry, my computer was telling me that a new uh, version of Java was available, and I was telling it to (laughs) F off. There's always a new version of Java. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Um, Cool. So this was new for all of us, and um, I'm interested to hear what you guys uh, have to talk about this movie, um, because I have some interesting thoughts about it as well. And uh, But that's what the point of the podcast is, to talk about it. So, uh, Andrew... If you will, sir, you're kind of your give us actually first tell us what the hell the Baba Duke is because that sounds like a made up word. I think it is. Uh, it's actually not, but that's fine. Oh. <laughs> it's, okay. in, it's in the tri- it's in the trivia, but I'm just gonna play up the joke that it's a made up word. Okay. Uh, a widowed mother, plagued by the violent death of her husband, battles with her son's fear of a monster lurking in the house but soon discovers a sinister presence all around her. That's bum, called bum, bum. the in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually <laughs> she's going dinner and social <laughs> services and that creepy niece of hers. And mm. um, Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead, Andrew, if you will. Uh, your initial thoughts and all that su- such a thing. Well, so. uh, you know, I like I said on the last podcast, if you could – hear me uh, clearly, <laughs> then... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> well, I'm apologizing to the listeners. If you guys listened last week and thought, what the hell is wrong? I yeah. I screwed up. So Sean, Sean was uh, running a chainsaw. While we- <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I activated a, an extra filter onto their channel and put it through distortion, and it was weird. Yeah. So, I uh, sorry. The truth of the matter is, we just it, missed Chad, it was, and we wanted that Megatron yeah. sound. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It was it was the backwoods uh, RV um, campsite <laughs> Wi-Fi. I would love to blame it on that, but I can't. <laughs> I wish I could. Oh, that's not how the internet works. I'm afraid. No. Um. Anyway, Andrew, you'll you'll uh, lead off, sir. Yeah. Sure. No, uh, as I said at the last on the last podcast, I nothing really bothers me as far as being scared. You know, there's few things, um, and buried, buried, whatever you want to call it, really got to me. Bard, um, bard, really got to me as far as giving me a true phobia, I guess you could say. Um, but this one, you know, I scary movies don't bother me. I went with a group of students to watch. Insidious four a few years ago and you know they were all screaming and cowering and I was sitting there enjoying the movie watching my popcorn. I have never seen an insidious. What's what's the rather well let me, let me reverse uh, that. I was eating my popcorn and watching the movie. You're watching your popcorn. I was not eating the movie and watching the popcorn. <laughs> uh, insidious came out in twenty ten. The first one a family looks to prevent evil spirits from tapping their comatose child in a realm called the further. Okay. There I'm sorry. No, it was Insidious 2 that I went to see. I never saw the first one. But, it, you know, well, for some reason I thought it was me. like a little slimy slugs or something attack a town. No, that's, no, 
No, that's a different one. That's got Nathan Fillion in it. What's yeah, it? you know what I'm talking about. I do. I can't remember what it's called, but I think it does have an I word. Yeah. Anyway, um, Inception. No. Slither? Uh, uh, Inter- Insidious? Interstellar? Yeah, something like yeah, it's Slither. Yeah, okay. And uh, Insidious didn't bother me. Uh, and it's a good movie. Uh, I liked it. It uh, made me think twice about turning on my metronome. <laughs> but anyway, um, you have to see that to understand it. Uh, this one... I kind of went right along with it. You know, I I call this more suspense than horror, really. And I think that they did a good job in incorporating Creepy Kid. But Creepy Kid turns hero unexplicably kind of halfway through. And then I go back and think about it and understand why or how he becomes hero. Uh, because he let the Babadook in and then somehow he let it out and it went into mommy. So... um I was a little confused at that point, but I didn't the movie I, itself, didn't, I, I never got that he let it in. I always thought that the mom let it in. Like he was always trying to keep it from getting in and that she was the one that let it in. Yeah, when he's, I, well, I, yeah. I understood it that when he was seeing it in the car with him and she wasn't seeing it, that he had let it in. But maybe I'm. I don't know. It, that that point was never really clear because no, I think I was think it the, her or was it him? I I had the same confusion. Yeah, the way I, I think c- it was their attempt to keep us in suspense. Yeah, well, confusion is kind of what it was. Um, yeah. I do think that when the scene where she's sleeping and then it pierces her back, I think is when that moment that it's really like inside her, right in. Mm-hmm. So. So. But I wasn't you know, inside her the whole time. Uh, bum, bum, bum. <sighs> Go ahead, Andrew. Sorry. Well, no, it's fine. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I thought it was fine. I, as far as scary movies go, I, I felt like I've seen, you know, nothing, nothing took me by surprise. Let's put it that way. I've seen this film, so to speak. Um, I didn't like how at the end it was kind of like, well, it's it's okay now. We're gonna we're gonna keep him as a pet, yeah. and uh, <laughs> yeah, never mind the dog. That, we're gonna know, name him Wolfie, him. and we're gonna keep him in the basement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, thought that was, I don't know. I that, that kind of bothered me, but everything else was was all right. That was not good. great, but but all right. Yeah. Okay, Sam. Yeah. All right. Well, I you know you were talking about it earlier how. I you know I probably read the same things you did that said this movie's supposed to be one of the scariest uh, uh, released and and was interesting and and kind of unique and so in that sense I actually uh, you know I got I waited I actually watched it at night I didn't I didn't watch it at work I uh, you know I kind of settled in to watch a really scary movie the lights were off. Um, Kimberly wasn't in the room. She was going to watch it with me, but then I think she decided sleep was a better option and and left. Fair enough. But I started watching it and I kept expecting more. Um, and, and I never really got that more to come. Uh, it's an interesting movie in the way that it is a more of a psychological drama because I believe the Babadook was never real except for in her kind of crazy dealing with anger issues mind mm-hmm. um, for it. And even at the end, you know, I figured that she'll always have that anger, but now she has it under control. Uh, the kid annoyed me. <laughs> um, and in, 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 these, in these movies, you, you want kids to survive, and I didn't want him to survive. <laughs> Um, and I know that sounds horrible, but he was so freaking annoying, and I don't blame the mother for wanting to. <laughs> well, I mean, and not just that. I know you're. I know, I know you're being horrible. But... <laughs> well, you're being funny, but like, really just glaring at me. He is so freaking annoying. He I is just... annoying, and and you oh. you kind of get. I mean, the, the whole purpose of him, I think, is to kind of lend sympathy to the mom because it's like this kid is truly bananas. Yeah. Like, and there's something legitimately wrong with him. I mean, yeah. yes, there's a monster haunting him, but there's other issues like getting over the dad issues. And, and I mean, both of them have issues, right? They, they both need therapy. Yeah. Hardcore. Like, they, they both need therapy. So, 
so he was extremely annoying. Um, but I think he's supposed to be. But, I think he's supposed yeah, to like. Yeah, he did become less so towards the end, and I think that's because they were making him, you know, out as the well, like think... Andrew mentioned, kind of the the hero. Yeah. Um, to it with his uh, gadgets or, you know, and the, things where you're pulling for him or you're trying to. But I tell you, at the beginning of that movie, I, I totally felt that poor mother, that poor single mother's pain. Yeah, no kidding. Um, dealing with this kid. So. Yeah. No, I'm I'm, I'm with you there. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that that's pretty much where I fall All on right. this. Um, it it's well made. I did enjoy the looks of it. Um, would I watch it again? Probably not. Right. Um, and I, and I was disappointed. I was expecting some jump scares. I was exp- I was expecting to be frightened, and you know, go to bed walking down my dark hallway into the bedroom, dark. To, you know, just to have that kind of queasiness, and I never got it. <laughs> um, I never got it from this movie, and um, I was a little disappointed. Uh, sure. Um, so. <laughs> You did the thing, and you've always done this, Sam, is you try to immerse yourself into the moment where it's like, okay, we're going to watch The Exorcist. We're going to do it at night and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. And I don't usually have that luxury, um, usually. Sometimes I do. Well, my daughter was, again, she's been sick, so I was up till 2 a.m. watching her, and I didn't want to watch this movie with her because I didn't know if there was going to be jump scares, and it would scare her and oh, wake gosh. her. Yeah, and you jump with her in your arms or something. Right, yeah, because yeah, she's 18, uh, 17 months old. I had to hold her. So that wasn't an option. So I watched it today, during the day, um, <laughs> while she was napping. Um, and so I don't get the full effect. So I'm in the middle of the day, yet our house is kind of creepy. I mean, it makes creaky, not creepy, creaky. It makes creaky noises. Mm-hmm. And, and, of course, then, like, there's a, like, the, the strings are building and the crickets are making their noises. And then my dog freaking, like, shakes her head and <laughs> her tail smacks the, um, uh, what is it? The, the uh, the no, no, it's the... Um, fireplace plate metal plate and makes this ding 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 noise and i'm like what's <laughs> going on you know and then like my cat like, has a wild hair up her butt she's like running through the house and i'm like this movie's actually kind of getting me a little bit and it's two o'clock in the afternoon right so the movie did a pretty good job on me of getting me into the mode of scary movie right um but okay. honestly the scariest thing for me in the whole movie is the book and that book... Oh, the creepy, creepy book. Yeah, book edit uh, version two. That was the only thing that actually made me kind of freak out a little bit in the whole movie was book version two, right? Is that the one where like the, the red paper comes out of her neck? Yeah, where she kills yeah. herself and she kills her dog and her son, right? The book is supposed to be pro- you know, prophetic, right? So as I'm watching this movie, I'm, I'm kind of with you, Sam, is that I'm not 100% convinced until literally... The very last scene of the movie, when she goes downstairs and feeds it worms, that it was ever a physical thing. Um, yeah. Did you guys ever see, and I don't know why I even watched it, but I did. There's an old movie, not old, it's an 05 movie called Hide and Seek with Robert De Niro. Mm. It's a horror. Uh, maybe. It's not what, It's not with Robin Williams, too, though, is no, it? No, no. Robert De Niro, Dakota Fanning, uh, Famke Jensen, Jensen. Elizabeth Shue, uh, and a couple other people you've heard of. Uh, as a widower tries to piece together his life in the wake of his wife's suicide, his daughter finds solace at first in her imaginary friend. And so she has this imaginary friend called Charlie. And oh, so this, wait, I think I have yes, And this whole yes, thing is about okay. this hide-and-seek, yeah. right? And they're, and they're whatever, come out, come out, you whatever. Right? And then the movie at the end, you then realize Charlie is Robert De Niro. He's had, he's had a break, yeah, yeah. right? He goes yep. through a psychotic break. And he loses it in touch with reality, and therefore he. So that's what I thought was going to happen, is that the Babadook was the mother's. It was her demon, right? The boy and her were going to share this, this demon that's basically their father or the husband, right? And we kind of get that a little bit anyway because we kept seeing flashbacks of him, and he he appears and he says, "I want the boy," and then they never he never says his son. So I kept thinking, okay, that's what this is. This is a manifestation of her dread and pain and anger. And same thing with the boy. So they're both seeing this thing and somehow this... And I always thought that the mother created the book. She created the book. Because how else would it get in the house? 
right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I understand mystical thing, but if the Babadook can't come in unless you let it in, then how does the book get there, right? I mean, at least mm-hmm. Jumanji, they had to find the, the, the board game. So, so the book is the tangible source between the two of them they both can see. Right, right. And yeah. so that's what kind of kickstarts the shared experience, which, again, I always felt until the very last second of the movie that she, she created. And that yeah. even when she destroys it, and then later it's on the front step, I always thought that I was waiting for the scene at the end of the movie where it showed that she put it back together, right? Mm-hmm. Like she's having a yeah. break, and she's the one that put it back together. That's what I kept expecting. And no, instead yeah. it's an actual they physical... Would have been creepier. I think it would have been. Yeah. And, and instead we got this, oh, it's a physical thing that we never really see. It's in the shadows, which I'm fine with. We don't have to see it. I think that ruins movies sometimes when you show me the big weird thing that the end of it that looks like a bad stop motion spider spider. Yeah. yeah. I mean that ruined the movie. The clown's way creepier, but so I'm okay with the fact that it's just like a shape and a shadow though. There was some kind of stop motion moments in this movie too, which were kind of funny. Although I, I'm sorry. I never got, I, I never got scared of the, the dolly being wheeled in with a cardboard cutout. And then kind of flares his little hands out or something. I was like, I, I, I didn't buy it. I just never bought it when yeah, they did that. Yeah, that that didn't that didn't bother me again. I mean, the stuff that gets me is the real stuff. You know, like when the boy pushes the the girl out of the treehouse. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. like that's yeah. like, oh, that's that's real because that could really happen. Because I'm sure that's actually happened before. And he's screaming his head off, and he falls off the monkey bars or whatever it was, like. All that stuff to create the, the the imbalance in us as the viewer, that all kind of worked mm-hmm. on me a little bit. Um, but I did have I did have a joke in it that I wrote in my script that the biggest bullshit thing in the whole movie is the fact that he had a pigeon in that thing at the end. It's like you're telling me this kid. I mean, I guess he can he can create dart. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, crossbows and. <laughs> um, cricket ball launchers. I guess he can, you know, capture a dove, train it, and then put it in a dish so he can do a magic trick. Um. <laughs> oh, and was, by the way, let's not let's not forget she's still a felon, right? Like she crashed a dude's car. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, she should and, be and in then jail. Got, then ran away. She, yeah, it's a hit and run. She should be in jail. So let's let's also not forget that. And then, <laughs> I mean, I guess that she. Did she doctor herself up? I mean, she had a stab wound in the leg, a puncture in the arm. Um, she had black ink all over at her. At least a concussion. At from, least a uh, concussion from, yeah, from the either the fall or the ball that hit her. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't the son freaking like like was gonna draw and quarter her? Man, that was. <laughs> I mean, I give him credit. He was clever. He's a clever boy for six. Mm-hmm. It was like Home Alone. Yeah. For horror movies, right. Although if you think about it, that is kind of a horror movie, Home oh. Alone. Yeah, if if the, if the things in Home Alone were were real, those men would have died several times, <laughs> like like a paint bucket going at terminal velocity to the face. That's concussion, oh broken gosh. nose, broken eye socket. You're calling the hospital. It's possible brain spl- uh, splatter. Yeah, right especially there. the second one when he throws that pipe, that pipe. like cast iron <laughs> pipe. <laughs> That's death. That's decapitation. I'm just going to be honest with you. I mean, he sets the one guy's hair on fire, his head on fire, and then he, he douses it in a bowl of, like not gasoline, but like turpentine or something, so it like ignites the whole downstairs. Again, he's dead. Joe Pesci is dead. Ha-ha! <laughs> yep. Oh, nice. And, and it that's worked. That's legitimate Joe Pesci. That's right. Reference. And it worked. Very so nice. anyway. Um, Although I hate to say it, the, the, the one thing that hurts me every time I watch it, of home loan has to be the nail through the shingle. Oh yeah. And the nail, I'm sorry, the nail in through the foot. The in the foot. Yeah. Oh, every <laughs> freaking time. Yeah. I'm oh. actually like balled up my toes right now. just thinking about it. And oh, that one's worse man. than when he goes in and he lands on the Christmas ornaments. Yeah. For some reason, just the single nail, just oh, that one hurts. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're not wrong about that one. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. <laughs> How did Home Alone get to snuck into a, uh, well, I mean, he, middle of Halloween. He, he did a thing. He did some Home Alone stuff. Um, yeah. I, I also did, so I wrote a lot of different, I actually wrote a lot of notes on this one because, you know, I do. Clever Boy, um, I did write Clever Boy. 
I, I, I was, I kept wondering also if the mom was just so numb from everything, right? Seven years without the, the husband. Accident and yeah. Like this, this boy, I mean, we're talking about acting out. I mean, he brought a weapon to school. He should, you know what I'm saying? Like he should have been expelled probably before then. And she's like, yeah. oh, let's just go get ice cream. I'm like, what? Yeah. He, he brought a weapon That's to school. What my mom always did, you know? <laughs> that explains. You're suspended from school. Oh. Let's uh now, let's go have some ice cream. Yeah, now again, that's not like it's not like in Interstellar when the daughter was <laughs> like, No, space travel is real. I'm like, what are you gonna do about they this? They didn't fake the moon landing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we're gonna go to a baseball game and eat popcorn and have ice cream. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Yeah, okay, that's that's not the same thing. Yeah, no. Never <laughs> your your kid brought a crossbow to school. Hmm. Ice cream. Wait, what? <laughs> um I like the cricket noise. I thought that was nice and creepy. Um, I did write, why does he have this book? There isn't a book on any shelf in this house that Sarah or I didn't buy or was gifted to. Like, in, like again, that still kind of weirded me out. That, uh-huh. Oh, where did we get this book from? I don't know. I just Well, and, and no offense. I, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of leaf through everything that I would look, especially if I've never seen it before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I would have seen the whole scary, ghostly you know, Baba Duke reference yeah. in there um, before reading it to the kid. Right. No kid. Uh, I also wrote. Um, or then maybe I would read it to the kid. Oh, God, no. No, you wouldn't. Hmm. No. I did write, why isn't the, the fireplace the first place that book goes? Um, after she'd <laughs> read it the first time and she puts it up on the shelf? No, fireplace. Immediately. You burn that bitch. Um, the Baba Duke put glass in her soup. That's pretty hardcore. And again, yeah. I wasn't hundred percent sure that it was the Baba Duke because again, at that I point, it was the kid, yeah, 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 you think it's the kid, yeah. because the the Baba Duke is in the in the kid, and the kid's like, it was the Baba Duke, it was, it was the Baba Duke. So shut up, kid. Um, so I kept wondering, you know, is again, is the is the Baba Duke have the ability to move matter? And I guess it does because it opened doors and was making noises so i guess it's that kind of ghoul um i also thought it was super weird that all the adults at the birthday party were dressed in weird dark clothes except the girl who's in pink everyone else is in dark clothes it's weird huh. I um until you said that. yeah i mean yeah. like it was like a funeral birthday party and which which it kind of was in the past i think but it seems strange i actually kind of felt like the director was like you know I love Danny Elfman or uh, Tim Burton. So we're going to basically model everything Tim Burton. Cause like the Baba Duke looks like something Tim Burton created. Oh, absolutely. You know, like it was on his cutting and, room and floor. And I did notice the lighting in this movie was odd. Yeah. In uh-huh. terms of in the house, it was very studio light lit. Well, did you notice that like the, the walls were in the, like, like the stairs were gray and like the, the banister was gray. Like the house was literally 50 shades of gray. <laughs> Except the kitchen that had like that shitty wallpaper, but like I noticed that probably halfway through the movie, I thought, "Wow, there's a lot of gray in this house." Um, I did write. I know you're scared. So that was the first time that. So it's the first to hear the noise and the door creaks, and then she goes and opens the door, and it's the dog, right? Mm-hmm. And then the door starts creaking and makes noise again, and. And I wrote, and this actually pissed me off a little bit. Okay, now the three of us are men, whatever yeah. that means, right? I'm not saying gender, what roles, just saying men of the house. There's a noise we investigate because we're dumb and that's what we do, right? We, but, we might carry a baseball bat with us. Or it's, yeah, we'll probably, yeah. I mean, I'll probably get yeah. the, the weapon I have a under. Golf club. Yeah. yeah, or something, some kind of whatever. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And, but my or wife. Sometimes we're just so sleepy that we run into the living room screaming, get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you know, you just try to make noise and hopefully you can scare him off. Like a like a like a trip over the dog as you enter and you land on some Legos. Yeah. But you're hoping like they'll scare like God, sand people. Those Legos. I don't know how many times I've cursed because I've stepped on a Lego at three AM or something. Oh, we all have. And it's usually what, right outside the hall in their in, outside their door, so you're trying not to wake them up. <laughs> yeah. Right? And then, <laughs> shit. I mean you, you're wondering if you've cut some sort of vein in your foot that's yeah. bleeding all over the carpet. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just assume that it's still <laughs> embedded into your bone now. Yeah. I'm pretty pretty <laughs> confident of that. 
Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> no. So the part where this really bothered me, I mean, I, I wrote obviously a long note about it, is that so like the door starts to open. This is the mother, right? Her child is in the bed next to her. And she mm-hmm. does the whole, I'm going to pull the blanket over my head. Like, you're the freaking mom. Protect your child. And Well, I think that was that was part of the problem and kind of the message they were talking about was how she was not being a mother yeah. to this kid. And, and it wasn't until that she finally faced the Babadook yeah. that she actually... And realized that her, her child was in danger. That's fair because... And you're right. And in, in, in our in our idea that the Babadook is all in her brain, yeah. that it's not a real thing, then I kind of get that idea that she's kind of hiding and hiding from responsibility and surrendering this control that she's supposed to have. And then she looks up and there's a stop motion bat thing up there. <laughs> so, but, I, but like, again, in the, in the moment, I was really mad. I was like, you're the freaking mom. Go protect your child. Like you're supposed to be Mama oh. Bear. Like, yeah. No, I'm right with you. I, I mean, I, whenever I, I go on trips for work, which I do, I always remind my wife how to load and shoot the gun. I mean, as as crazy as that sounds, I always do because she's Mama Bear and that's her job. And you know, but now I'm home, so I'm Papa Bear. I mean, like we're all protective of our cubs, and that's. It's, and I'm Creepy Uncle Bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes Creepy Uncle Bear. <laughs> I have Uncle Bear if, standing outside our window. If he ha- if he has candy, don't take it. Okay. <laughs> so pre-show, Andrew, you'll find this funny. So pre-show, I was I was telling Sam that uh, through text that I was like, "Man, I'm tired as hell. I didn't uh, I didn't get much sleep last night." And Sam said something like, uh, "Well, I saw you with Daphne. I was going to come and relieve you, but I was too comfy hiding in your closet." To which I said, you would be dead because the closet is where the cat sleeps and Sam's allergic to cats. And so he says, well, no, I brought my CPAP machine and I had it run. And I'm like, so that's what kept waking up Daphne is your loud ass machine. I call it a house snorkel. Oh, yeah. Those things are fun. Several several members of our family have those. Um, uh, I know you're scared. Oh, stand up. I wrote that. Um, I'm not sure watching old weird magic shows will help your state of mind. Um, maybe that's all she could afford. Maybe that's all that's on Australian. Television. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. I love how she has the typical 2017 answer to something too. Just go watch a DVD. Go go watch TV. Yeah. Go. <laughs> um, I did write. Even my five year old would would question why we're getting into a bath bathtub with our clothes on. Like when she reached over and picked him up, my kid would literally back up and say, "What are you doing?" What? Yeah, yeah. But my son also kind of <laughs> questions everything. I, I chuckled a little bit. I don't know if I was supposed to, but she was like, "Isn't it warm?" Yeah, <laughs> like, which I, why is it warm? Like, did she just pee in it, mom? Like, what's happening? Um, I did, I did, I did kind it's of feel turning yellow, mom. I, I have to say, did you guys feel really bad for her when she's? Uh, this is honestly the first time I've ever watched a movie, at least for this podcast. But that, I don't, I think ever where we have. On screen women masturbation moment. I just don't see that very often in the movies. For the yeah. podcast, yeah, I think. And yeah, I mean, and that's why I, I, that's why when that happened, I was like, yeah, this is, this is in her head. Um, she just can't get away from anything. All right. She can't even do this, the very personal thing. And then the kid and freaking burst into the room. I felt bad for dang her. kid. Um, I did yeah. write, um, Mom is a habitual liar. She lied about every damn thing. Uh-huh. My kid is sick. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Oh, he, uh, there's a hole in the wall. No, there's not. Oh, oh it's uh, it, like everything she freaking lied about. Uh, I also wrote, damn, that kid has an arsenal. And then I wrote, if she kills the dog, I'm out. And my next note was, F this movie. Because <laughs> dog. she dude. kills the dog with her bare hands, and then they bury it under the rose garden. Did you guys notice that? Uh-huh. I thought that was kind well, of funny. you know, the... The Papa took, said she was going to. Yeah, I did. Uh, wow, the kid just stabbed his mom. And then I wrote, did she just yell it to death? Because that's all she did. She just screamed. Like, did she just, like, lion guard that thing into oblivion? No, no what she did was, was she looked at it, popped it on the nose with a newspaper and said, no. No, Babadook. No. No. Bad. Bad dog. Bad dog. <laughs> 
No. Okay, downstairs in the basement where you belong. Right. And then speaking <laughs> and of it, basement, and it like its tail between its legs and. Do, do, yeah. do you have to exclude? Like, 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 of course. Ex- exclude? That's not the right word. Let let the realtor know about the thing in the basement when you have to sell the house. Disclose, yeah. Like disclose, yeah. yeah. Disclose. Like, and I hope nothing is in the basement that's important, like laundry. You know, because some people have their laundry room in their basement. Was there laundry in that? Basement? I don't. I don't remember seeing it. It was just, I think, the storage place for the father, which again There's made me still believe. Dead. That's what made me still think that the Baba Duke was the dad. It's like the ghost of mm-hmm. the dad haunting them. It's because it lives now in the space where all his stuff is. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I mean, it, it materialized as the father. Yeah, it did at one point. So I mean, I, I, I don't yeah. know. Maybe it was. I mean, maybe he was like, listen, she was a bitch, and this kid. <laughs> this I'm kid kind of sucks. Them. So I'm just gonna her- terrorize them, make them kill the dog, and if they kill each other, great. Then we'll all be together and wherever. <laughs> but if not, maybe it'll cure them somehow. <laughs> Had this ended differently, we would have heard, ha ha, joke's on you. Right. Welcome to the afterlife. I mean, like, even, like, even, like, this, the weather was different afterwards. You know, it was, like, even sunnier. Yeah. And she actually put makeup on and whatever. Uh, and then I did write, let's not forget she's a felon, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe Australian laws are different. I don't know. We don't have any Australian listeners I'm aware of, but I would assume did that. Did she get fired? I, that's one thing I was, I was trying to. To remember. I, don't, I don't think I so. I couldn't tell. She was talking to somebody on the phone. Well, because in the movie, she's back in her scrubs. Tell. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. He's, I think they threatened to give away all her shifts. And she was like, but I need them. And he said something. And she said, well, do what you have to do or whatever. I can't remember. I never okay. thought that she got fired. I was, But I did kind of get that she did lose hours. The only trope I wrote okay. was no one can and will help in a horror film. Goes to the police. Never. They're like, nothing we can do. So. Cool. All right. Moving on to uh, Clippy Clips. I didn't get a whole lot because, frankly, there's not a whole lot to get in this in a movie like this. But here we go. Uh, oh, we did have a hopping man, I think. Yeah, we did. Like the yeah, boyfriend this, guy. Or the, the guy with the flowers. Like he right? shows up. Yeah, he shows up. And then we never see him again. I mean, at least have him at the end of the movie where he's like got his arm around the girl or the wife or whatever, you know, showing that so she's moving point, on. I kind of thought maybe he was... The, the Bob Oh sure, yeah. Well, he's he, he he's only in two scenes in the whole movie, and or three, and the first one he's a douche, and then the second two he's nice. And speaking of douche, here it is. Ah, just where a woman should be in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> okay, so this is so 2014, story. right? Like true story. My son draws a picture the other day, and. It, in my house, we—it's we, very much. I'm in. I'm the one normally cooking. I mean, we kind of share that responsibility. Mm-hmm. So it really caught me off guard, and I think it caught my wife off guard too. But uh, they came home from school, and they sat down, and they wanted to color and draw stuff. And I get home from work, and the, my wife says, "Go look and see what they, your son drew." Oh no! And there's a picture of our house, and. There's three male figures standing in the yard, and he says, "This is me and you and, and my brother." And uh, behind the glass window, holding a dish and bubbles floating around her head, is I said, "Who's this?" And he said, "Well, that's mommy. She's washing dishes." I, <laughs> I, I couldn't help but to crack up, and I look at her, and she's rolling her eyes like, "Yeah, he's already a sexist pig." Nice. <laughs> He's five years old. Nice. <laughs> uh, all right. So I wrote this one. I wrote birthday party, but then I said, "What did she say?" So it's at the birthday party, but the 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 the, the mom says something, and I here once again, Sean doesn't understand something someone says. All right. So here we go. I'm not sick. Oh, I, I, I thought. No, he's not actually. The truth is, he's so disobedient, he can't go to school anymore. You said that's not true. How many six-year-old boys do you know, Robbie, who still believe in monsters? I hate you! She won't let me have a birthday party, and she won't let me have a dad! Mm. Have a dad? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here's the part I didn't understand. Right? I'm not... <clears throat> I thought... No, he's not, actually. The truth is, he's so disobedient, he can't... 
What? He's so disobedient. So uh -huh. disobedient? Is that what the word? He's not actually. Yeah. Yeah. The truth is, he's so disobedient. He can't go to school. Disobedient. Okay, yeah, I'm with so you now. Disobedient. <laughs> he can't go to school. I've I've listened to that track seven times, and that was the first time. See, it's, I just I need you guys to tell me what things are. Yeah. All right. Here's some. Uh, we're, used, we're used to mumbles. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in an Australian accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, kids are mean. You're not even good enough to have a dad. Everyone else has one, you don't. I do have a dad. I listen to your life day in, day out, and you never stop to ask me anything about mine. I do. I want to know how you are. You don't come around to our house anymore? Because I can't stand being around your son. I can't believe you just said that. You can't stand being around him yourself. Your dad died so he didn't have to be with you. That's not true! And your mum doesn't want you. Push. That is like I would have pushed her out of a tree, too. I, me too, absolutely. She deserved every bit of those broken noses in two, point, two spots. Yeah. Yeah, just pull it, did a little Jeffrey Lan or, uh, uh, Lannister move and just pushed her right out. All right. <laughs> nice. Uh, I wrote twin. Oh, yeah, this was kind of funny. Mom? Yeah, she's got a twin. They can go shopping together. <laughs> it's like the only joke in the whole movie, beside the sexist one at the beginning. All right. Uh, I don't know. I kind of laughed when she got hit with the crossbow. Oh. <laughs> with the mom? <laughs> it just kind of stuck. Yeah, it stuck her in her arm. <laughs> she, yeah, she didn't seem to care. Uh, so this is one of those oh. moments, like, it would only, like, if this were a sitcom, this would be great, right? You know, like, uh, like uh, <laughs> Lily and Marshall are trying to adopt a kid, and then the social people come over, and then one of the kid, the kid they already have, is like, says the thing that he says, and then they make it worse. Yeah, that's what this reminded me of. Hello, Samuel. I'm Prue, and this is Warren. How are you? I'm a bit tired from the drugs Bob gave me. <laughs> no drugs, <laughs> tranquilizers. From the doctor. I mean, he had a, a fit. Yesterday. I love how she says, not drugs, tranquilizers. The only thing I think of of tranquilizers is things you give to animals. You know, like, <laughs> oh, the horse was acting up and having a fit, so we gave it a tranquilizer. Like, that's what you don't give that to your so, six year old. One of your team members tested positive for uh, <laughs> horse tranquilizers. Uh, horse tranquilizers. Damn it, Bernice. Didn't they actually? That's a scene. <laughs> oh, no, he says uh, sedatives. Beaver, beaver trick. I was, I, was, I was thinking of Armageddon when he's like, <laughs> one of these guys tested positive for blah, 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 blah. It's a sedative. Well, some of these guys are pretty big. Well, this one's used on horses. Like, <laughs> um, anyway, but I, all I could think of is like, no, no, not drugs. Tranquilizers. I mean, maybe tranquilizer is a word that they use in Australia for like sleep aid or something, but... It just all I, all I could think of is she put a trank at the end of his dart on his uh, dart gun and shot him I in the love, neck. The blow dart, basically. Yeah. I love to have got any of those trank <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> and w the three of us are parents. And um, mm -hmm. I, I, Sam, I've actually not been around your kids since they've been talking and Andrew, I've, barely met your children but i know mine my son he will talk and talk and talk until you lose your flipping mind now mm. i've never said this but there are times that i've thought it i'm just gonna be real okay love my son he's the greatest thing ever but honestly there have been times where i've kind of thought this hello samuel that's not it i'm pro that's not it this is it i couldn't find any food in the fridge you said to have them with food I'm really hungry, Mum. Why do you have to keep talk, talk, talking? Don't you ever stop? I was just... I need to sleep. I'm sorry, Mummy. I was just really hungry. If you're that hungry, why don't you go and eat shit? <laughs> <laughs> when taking out of context, that's a lot funnier than what's actually happening on screen. I'm not going to lie. On screen, I was like... Like I, I feel super bad for the kid right now because she's basically tranking him and then yelling at him for the, the after effects of said tranking. 
But in the meantime, I kind of, I kind of oh. sympathize, mom. Yeah. I get it. I know. Because my son, the moment that he's awake, he's talking. Just, mm-hmm. just the way he yep. is. Yep, that's about right. So, love him to death, but shh. <laughs> <laughs> and there are times I will say this: there are times when, well, mainly when the TV's on, but there are other times he can get just downright like, 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 like. He's lost in thought. Like when we're driving in the car, he doesn't talk. Not usually. He's looking out the window. I'm like, what you thinking about, buddy? Mm, nothing. Just trains and cars and airplanes. Just he's. Just, I mean, seriously, we'll go on a two hour road trip and he'll say five things. Like we have to engage him. When he's home, though, oh. At, <laughs> at, at eight a.m. on a Saturday morning, yeah, he's talking. All right. Anyway, here we go. And now for some more bad news. Ready? Uh, Trivia. The movie had a campaign where you could buy a copy of the Babadook pop-up book for $80. The first... That's a lot of money. The first 2,000 copies were numbered and signed by the director, Jennifer Kent. The book contains pop-up pictures as well as additional pages not seen in the movie. The campaign was only open for a limited amount of time and is no longer available. I like how they had to put that in there and make sure that we don't try to go buy one. <laughs> William Freakden, Fre- Friedkin. Happy Lucy, I've got a new book to read to you tonight. Right. Um, and then we're going to read Coraline. No. Um, William Friedkin, the director of The Exorcist, said this film, quote, I have never seen a more terrifying film than The Babadook. See, uh, I don't know, no, no. Yeah, I, 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 I have. I didn't find it terrifying. I can think of three movies off the top of my head that I thought were scarier. The Exorcism yeah, of floats. Emily Rose. Love Floats, that you just said? Or Hope Floats. Hope Floats. Yeah, hope floats. <laughs> <laughs> Exorcism of Emily Rose, The mm. Ring, and The Grudge are all scarier yes. movies, in my opinion. Yeah. In Exorcism, Hebrew... Absolutely, all the way. In Hebrew, Ba Baduk means he is coming for sure. So... That actually kind of makes it a little creepier. And then I, I really liked this one. This is probably my favorite piece of trivia we've had in a long time. And like, seriously, not, not being silly. The director, Jennifer Kent, was extremely sensitive about introducing the themes of the movie to child actor Noah Wiseman, who was, in fact, six. He was six years old. He wasn't an eight-year-old playing a six-year-old. He was six. During the three weeks of pre-production, she carefully gave him a child-friendly version of what the story was about. Wiseman's mother was on set throughout filming, and Wiseman himself was never actually present on set during the scenes in which the mom's character abuses her son. Davis instead delivered her lines to an adult actor who stood on his knees. Kent is, quote, saying, I did not want to destroy a childhood to make this film. Yeah. That's probably because she met the freaking director of The Exorcist and was like, I don't want to do what he did and Mm -hmm. ruin that poor kid, right? So I really like that. I actually really well, appreciate didn't Linda that. Blair, didn't she break her back? Yeah, they freaking ruined that woman. And then she yeah, got yeah. caught up like she got like on painkillers and it was real bad. Bad news. Um So I, yeah. I just looked up the uh Babadook uh book mm-hmm. on eBay and you can get one for four hundred and forty nine dollars. Yeah, hell with that. Hell with that. Um no, thank you. Here we go. I'll make you one shot. <laughs> I'll make you a Babadook book. Please don't. I'll have Lucy help me. She likes to cut things out. <laughs> that sounds terrifying. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me while I whip this out. We're going to do top three hauntings. Um, movies hauntings. Again, yes. we, and we are describing a haunting as not just a house, right? It could be a house, but it could be something else, right? It's it could be kind of up to you. Yeah. Um, whatever. So, like Jurassic Park. Yes, Jurassic Park, where you had a dead thing, and then it's been brought back to life, reanimated, if you will. Yeah, there you go. And then tries to eat people. So, or, um, you know, see, seeing uh, Jeff Goldblum's uh, chest, bare chest, chest hair, breathing, um, is, is haunting in itself. It kind of so, is, in a, in a beautiful, chest. in a beautiful kind of haunting way. Um, yeah. Anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, I can't help but laugh every time I go to um, their Excel spreadsheet to look at the movies and get the um, the out of tens ready. Where where yeah. Corny put a little middle finger next to the Birdemic <laughs> one. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Makes me laugh. Uh, so we're doing hauntings. So 
I can't wait to do this because I, I put again once again I put one in just to poke the bear a little bit. So, Andrew. All right. Um, give me just a second because I want to make sure this is the right name of this movie. You want Andrew, uh, Sam to go? It's called no. The Little Mermaid. Yeah, that's the one I was looking for. Okay. Okay. No, this is Kevin Bacon. Oh, the thir- um, 13 Ghosts? Was it 13 Ghosts that oh, he was in? Yeah, it has, it has the girl that was in the show House. She was in that too. Was he, was he the go- one of the ghosts? I don't know. Is it? I think that's what it was. Was it 13 Ghosts? There was one I called... Know. I don't uh, remember that one. No, no, there was one called... Uh, no, that's not it. Uh, I know what Hollow Man, maybe? Well, Hollow Man's where he he literally that's like, the Invisible Man. The Invisible no Hollow Man is where he he the Invisible Man is Chevy Chase. The Hollow Man is Kevin Bacon. No, I know, but he is an Invisible Man. Yeah, but he goes crazy while doing it. Yeah, yeah. and tries so to. He's, that's that's not uh, okay. No, but so there's a ghost one. That was, that's not really a haunting. But there's there is one with him. I'm, I'm almost uh, well. Com- there's one called um, Stir of Echoes. That's what I was Footloose. thinking of. Stir of yeah. Echoes. Footloose. Oh, Stir of Echoes. Yeah. <laughs> Dumbass. But that, I haven't seen Stir of Echoes. I was getting it confused. With, yeah, that's what uh, it is. With the uh, Tom. Man. Tom is his name. After being hypnotized by his sister-in-law, a man begins seeing haunting visions of a girl's ghost, and a mystery mystery begins to unfold around him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, a little tangent there. Okay, so my number three is going to be The Shining. Okay. Um, and I've seen it twice and still loved it both times. It is extremely long, though. Steven, still haven't seen it. Um, number two, The point. Frighteners that we... Oh, The Frighteners. Oh, yeah. oh I love oh, that movie okay. so much. Such a funny and uh, great movie. And then... Unexpectedly good movie. Unexpectedly yeah. good, yeah. Oh, man. And then number one... Uh, Beetlejuice. Okay. That's one. Get back to the goddamn crowd! Go unorganized, grab that gobble, teleplasmic shit! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little Frighteners for you. Nice. Uh, I love Frighteners. I'm surprised you had that somewhere. That's impressive. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I got, I got it. Like I got within it. arm's reach. It was right beside Poultry Guys, right? It was right next to Poultry Guys, no. Um... <laughs> I, and I actually have like two other um, star gels. Oh, I already wrote that one. That one. Um, and I also have. Uh, uh, what in the hell are you doing in my graveyard? You have been told to stay away. Sound off like you've got up here. Yeah, well, it's a public place, Hiles. I do not like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, I'm good. All right. And Beetlejuice, you said. All right, right on. I wish you'd do that for the podcast. Oh, too. Oh. No, it's got to be the same person, right? I don't know. Isn't that the is rule? It, does it? Does it? No. It just has to be. I mean, three people in the history of of an hour are probably going to say it at some point during the month of Halloween. I thought it'd be the same person. Did you, ever get, did you guys ever watch I the cartoon? Watch the movie again. Yeah, yeah I uh, love the cartoon. That was, a, that was a good cartoon. Because well, that's because he was a the good guy in that. Yeah. 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 Um. Okay. Is it my turn? Yes. Your turn, Sam. All right. Uh, my number number three is uh, Mr. Juice again. Um, <laughs> my number two is the uh, poultry. I almost said poultry guys. Poltergeist. The real poltergeist. Um, and my number one is the sixth sense. I'm spelling Beal wrong. Why am I? Why is this not coming up? How do you spell it? B E S I X T H. Um, B E A B B E E T L E B E. My God, right? Sean, what's wrong with you? B Yeah, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like B E A B E. Oh, it's not. Were you looking up the rules to Beetlejuice? No, I was looking up to see if it was streaming anywhere. Yeah, you know, there's a uh, second one coming. Is it really? really? Yeah. Like the same people or? Yeah. Oh, they're all fat now. It'll be funny. Well, the, uh, Michael Keaton will be Beetlejuice again. And uh, uh, what's the name of Lydia Dietz? What's her? Uh, can't think. Okay. The rules appear to be that one speaker has to willingly say his name three times. Willingly. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay. We're, what was your number one, Sam? Uh, Six Sense. Six Sense. Okay. Got it. Cool. Yep. All right. 
Uh, my turn. So I had two honorable mentions um, for this. My first one was The Ring. Um, actually, I I, I kind of like the movie. I guess is it, is it the standard uh, standard uh, tone ring? No, no. Um, Have you seen the movie? You know, do 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 do. Yeah, the Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> so my number two, my number my second honorable mention, just to just to get a you know, just see if I can get some argument, The Empire Strikes Back. There well, are ghosts. I, I, I'll give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Obi Wan Kenobi. It's not they really never call them ghosts, but they yeah. certainly look like it. Yeah, and they're not really haunting them. They're, it's more like a dialogue. They're I just, always watching. I mean, imagine if poor Luke wanted to go. I don't know. Pleasure himself. <laughs> He's a Jedi. He doesn't do that kind of a thing. Well, but you're. But you're not wrong. Like, with it you're not. You're not wrong, <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> like if if he decided to break away from the Jedi Order and it's like, you know what, I want to have a family. And he's, you know, getting on with his wife, and all of a sudden you hear the voice of Alec Guinness going, Luke, use the force. Like, Get out of here. Go on. Um, anyway. <laughs> Luke, use the force. Force it in her. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. That was weird. Uh, my number three was, was The Evil Dead 2. Um, okay. Yep. Uh, number two was Beetlejuice. And then my number one is Monster House. Monster House? Yeah, it's an animated. Cartoon? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. I've seen bits and pieces of that. We watch, that's become it's, a staple in our house. We watch it every year. Is now. that the stop motion one? It's right? not stop motion. It's more, it's, it's, it's computer animated, but it looks like it was done stop like, motion. yeah, like stop motion like, clay. Like, like Frank and Weenie or. Um, yeah, like Nightmare before Christmas. If yeah, Nightmare was done are. CGI. Gotcha. It's very Tim Burton-y, but it's not. But it looks very it's very Tim Burton-y. But we watched it this year. This is the second year we've watched it with Declan. Oh, and so okay. And he gets a little. He gets a little. He'll grab onto your arm at like one of the like one or two moments. But then after that, once you get past the yeah. fact that the house is a big weird thing, because like because watching it this time, he was like he was actually asking questions about why the house is haunted and who the person was. And if you've not seen it, I don't want to, it's actually a spoiler. I don't want to give it away because it's, it's worth, yeah. it's worth not knowing. Well, in that same vein, I got to put hotel Transylvania. Sure. I mean, yeah, there's mm-hmm. ghosts and ghouls and kind of haunt the, so the hotel. Good. It is a funny one. The second one's not bad. Oh, I like the first one so though. Good, yeah. It's pretty fun. All right. And that's our top three. Um, yeah. I'm surprised nobody said ghostbusters. Uh, well, that's true. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Is that too on the nose? I don't know. Maybe not. Kind of is. <laughs> That's fine. Um, cool. Uh, out of ten, I think we're we're ready for that yeah. part of the show. Hey, yeah, I, suppose, uh, I went and looked at our new rankings here. Now that I've updated the website, trying to think of where in the heck word I put this thing. Oh well, I mean, I don't know. Go ahead, Andrew. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm gonna say that this is not really my cup of tea. I have watched horror movies that I actually enjoy watching and that I could watch again. This one, I don't really want to watch again, not because it freaked me out, but just because I didn't enjoy it that much. Um, You know, even if it were on TV and there was nothing else on, I probably would, you know, take a nap instead. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think this has to fall somewhere in the, I don't know, 4.8 range just because it wasn't that great of a movie. 4.8 is that what you said? Yeah. All right. Well, I, can, I can dig it. Sam? Uh, Sean and I, you know, you and I talk about sports a lot. We do. And we talk about expectations versus reality and how a fan base reacts to that. Sure. And I unfortunately went into this thing with the expectations that this was going to scare my pants off. And, um, you know, it would creep me out. It was one of the scariest things in the world. And it wasn't in any way that way to me. I think the movie is fairly well done. I think it's interesting as a uh, kind of an insight into this poor single mother and everything she's doing, um, including the lock jaw slash tooth that problem she had. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> Apparently has something to do with... Uh, also, What's, kind of a, a hopping man moment. Yeah, like, yeah. It was never really brought that back. In fact, um, if you guys are ever interested, look up what the heck is with the tooth in the Babadook, and there's essays 
written about it. So, oh, really? um, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't watch it again. I don't. I don't even think I'd recommend it to anybody. So I'd probably put it down there around. I'd say a good even four for me. All right. Um, out of ten. Four. Okay. Cool. Yeah, look four. Um, I'm. I'm. I'm actually not that far off. Honestly, it's in where you are. Um, yeah. It was fine. It wasn't. Again, it wasn't. It wasn't anything really all that fantastic. Um, it wasn't to me all that. I got more st- freaked out by Bur- buried than I did. I I was thinking oh, yeah. I was thinking yeah, that too. Cool. Yeah, because again, buried I think is way more realistic. But right. I was thinking about of the movies that we've done for this. This is now our third year of doing the Halloween thingy, and mm-hmm. uh, we've done so we've done Bur- uh, Birdemic. Buried in Babadook. I was looking for a B movie to, to complete it just to see if we could. <laughs> so last year we did The Exorcist, Jaws, Event Horizons, and Tremors, right? So The Exorcist was really the only one of that of those three that kind of freaked me out. Um, I actually that one actually did give me bad dreams for a couple of days. And then the last one we did was Poultry Geist, The Frighteners, The Prophecy, and Tucker and Dale. So really none of them are. <laughs> Really, the, no. none of them are, are are of that ilk. We were just getting our feet wet in terms of watching scary movies for this podcast. Yeah. So, so anyway, I mean, Cabin in the Woods, I think, is actually creepier than than this movie. It's not yeah. meant to be. Yeah. Snowpiercer is a scarier movie than this movie. Um. So anyway, I don't know. I. Uh, oh wait, I missed. I missed a. Yeah, you know, yeah. Fantastic fear, Fantastic of air, fear, fear yeah. zombie beavers, saw, and ABCs. Saw was actually, thank you, Sam. Saw is actually probably actually the most creepy one we've done because it puts you mm-hmm. in those scenarios of what would you do. And I still claim that the biggest bullshit in that whole movie is the fact that that dude laid on a cold floor for three hours um, <laughs> without moving, without moving, I c- even even a breath. I can't yeah. lay on my carpeted floor for more than thirty minutes without my back cramping up. So. Anyway, to answer my own requirement is uh, four four point eight. I'm just gonna give it. I don't know. If, I'm not looking at the other lists, whatever. But I'm just gonna give it a three point nine. I mean, it, for a low budget, it had some qualities that I liked, but the movie looked good. It sounded dude, fine, but it was. Dude, this is our fourth October doing this. Oh, it is our fourth. Yeah, you're right. We actually are wow. coming up on uh, January something. Is our will be four years of the podcast. Wow. Oh. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, it is kind of cool. It's actually kind of exciting. So I hate to do this on air because I forgot to do it before the air, before we started Uh-oh. recording. But we have <laughs> we have not picked our fourth movie because so much got kicked off. Uh-oh. Um so much got removed. So if we go off of oh, damn it, come on, Yahoo, what are you doing? Uh if you go off of what was the next highest vote for the podcast on the the thingy that we Sam did on the website. Mm-hmm. Obviously, what the shining is off. The shining is Killer off. Clowns is off. Ten. Yeah, so it would have to be. What ravenous would be next? Yeah, it would be ravenous in a remote military outpost, and it is still streaming. Okay. So there's that, but I'm not gonna lie. I hopped on Netflix just to see, and the first top thing when you go to Netflix is Netflix original The Babysitter. When Cole Ooh, stays I up, I saw that too. When Cole stays like up past it, his bedtime, he discovers that. The, his, read the description. Yeah, yeah. that's why I am. His, his he discovers that his hot babysitter is part of a satanic cult that will stop at nothing to keep him quiet. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to do that, but it, it looks kind of fun. That I mean, fun. Let's um, do it. Let's do it. Let's, we've we've had two weeks of. Well, and in in fairness, Ravenous is not a fun movie. It's a, it's a it's. It's again. It's more like buried. It's life choices. People are stuck in snow. Time to eat some people, kind of a thing. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. you know, and it seems like every year we have done kind of a funny. You know, we did yeah. Tremors last year, um, Zombie Beavers the year before. Um, off, obviously Tucker and Dale and Poltergeist, Frighteners. Yeah. You know the. So, I'd say let's try to do something a little that might be a little funny horror. Oh, it's got the girl from Pitch Perfect in it, too. She does the beatbox in Pitch Perfect. She's in it. That's kind of funny. Um, 
Oh, Leslie Bibb. She would be our Iron Man connection. Um, <laughs> Robbie, wait, no. Robbie Amell. You look just like your brother, Stephen Amell, who is the star of Arrow. Weird. Anyway, it's directed by Mick G. Um, who, he, 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 no, oh, Mick G. Check. It's literally his name is Mick G. Um, he has done, um, most notably for me, he direct, he was like creator of Chuck, the TV show Chuck. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Yeah. I freaking love Chuck. He also did producer of Supernatural and the OC and the Kida. Yeah. He directed, and he, and Sam, I know you'll remember this. Remember the, um, the Christian, not Christian, the Colin, yeah, Christian Bale freak out on the Terminator set. Mm-hmm. McG was the director. So when he's uh, screaming, he's yeah. screaming at McG at what the director of photography did. Um, he walked across his line, line of sight. He he, he, he walked. Yes, yeah, yeah, he did. Eye line. Correct. He did. Uh, he directed. He directed this, and then before this, he's done some TV, and then Three Days to Kill, and some other stuff. We'll talk about it next week. So yeah, the Babysitter. Yeah, I'm actually kind All of right. excited because it looks super campy, and I'm actually kind of excited for it. Um, Absolutely. Like even the 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 poster looks like '80s camp. <laughs> I mean, it just does. So I'm I'm excited for it, uh, and it's only an hour and a half. So it doesn't oh nice. And it's only it's got a six point five, um, and so there you go. Cool. All right, cool. That's what we're doing next week. The babysitter. In the meantime, in the meantime. Oh, is it weird that when when um. When she said the Baba Duke Duke Duke, I started th- in my head. I started thinking, so light him up, 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 light him up. <laughs> start, that was, that was, that's I'm been, on fire. Yeah, that's been in my head for like three hours. So sorry. Anyway, um, go to our website, cheapseatreviews.com. It's a cool place to go. You can see former episodes. Um, look at our reviews and or not. Our, well, yeah, you can see a former episodes. Check out our our uh, what was the word we were just looking at. Rankings. That's the word. That's a hard word for some reason. Check out our it's Anchor app, uh, you, which you can also find on iTunes. Uh, I just put one up there for Baby Driver. I finally got that up. Um, sorry it took so long between episodes. Uh, leave us a review. Please leave us reviews on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, anywhere. Mainly iTunes and Stitcher. We need those reviews. More reviews we get, then the more listeners will, will help find the show because then yeah. iTunes will put us higher up on the ranking um, cause that's what that goes by. It goes ranking by reviews. So throw some reviews our way. If you haven't done so, please, uh, facebook.com slash cheap seat reviews. And of course you can follow us at cheap, ca- cheap seat cast on the Twitter and cheap seat reviews at gmail.com is our email address. And we are still doing the gofundme.com slash cheap seat reviews. Help us out. Keep the show, keep the lights going. I appreciate it. And, um, that's going to do it. So on behalf of Andrew and Sam and Corny, who we, you know, miss, Uh, This is Sean saying thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week for The Babysitter. Babysitter's Club. Oh, okay.